So you're only limited by your imagination and your ability to convince the other guy that it's a good deal. Think in terms of resources rather, rather than dollars, because it may well be that you can get a resource through some sort of bartering or for equity, and it'll cost you a whole lot less in equity than it would be to raise the money and then go out and purchase access to that resource. How do you build yourself into a deal without any money? So here we're talking about finance from a different perspective. Like you were mentioning earlier, and this is one of your titles of your books, I believe other people's money. Yeah. How do you build yourself? Let's say I have no money. I'm starting out, I'm sitting on a street corner. I have an idea. I'm the next Michael Jackson. I, I want to be in, I, I want to get famous. So, so what do I do? I have no money. How do I build myself into a deal? So let's, let's assume a couple of things. One is that your idea is credible, that it makes sense. And you can communicate that. And people will believe you when you say it, okay? So you can show them, in essence, supporting evidence. You've made projections and, and you can make them believe those projections. And not just pie in the sky. Okay, now we were talking earlier about contributions to a venture. Think of the business as, as separate and apart from you. It's a different entity. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're going to take this idea, this intellectual property that you have, and you're going to contribute that to the venture. Now, that contribution can be in the form of an assignment where the venture now owns it, mm -hmm. or it can be that you give the venture a license. You just let them use it. You retain the title to the intellectual property. And, and whether or not you do that depends a lot on the situation and the objectives of the other people that are co-venturing with you. So you find somebody that has the resources that you need. Okay, now let's now one of those resources is money, but let, let's look at other resources. So let's say that, that you need to have a studio of some sort to supply this. Now you can go out and rent one, okay, and then you'd have to raise money to do that. Or you work a deal with somebody that's got that facility. Mm. And, and basically you bring them into the venture. They become your co-venture. So they make the contribution of the use of this facility. And in return for that, they get something. Let's say for purposes of discussion, it's an equity ownership in the, the new venture. Doesn't have to be. It could be, you know, a... a sort of a royalty on products. It could be um, you know, a, a, some sort of a, you know, a, a percentage of any profits you make. I mean, it, it's you're only limited by your imagination and your ability to convince the other guy that it's a good deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now your business has a couple of assets. It's got the intellectual property and it's got the facility. Okay, so let's say that, that you are going to need somebody with a certain skill set. Now, again, you can raise the money and, and hire them. Or, again, you trade them something for their services. Sometimes you trade them equity. You've heard the expression sweat equity. Mm -hmm. It will basically, working for a company, and instead of paying you dollars, they pay you uh, a, a equity units. Okay. So thus far, you haven't put any money, in, mm -hmm. but you, you've got the basics for the business. Okay, so now this, what you have there is worth a certain amount. So you go to somebody that, that's got money, assuming that you need the money. It may be that at this point, you're in a position where you can start developing. And, and let's say that, that you do that. You develop a, a product, a deliverable. Okay, at this point, then you need to have a way to distribute it. Okay, and so here again, you look for, for a channel to do that. Uh, and you have to be able to get the product made and or, or uh, you have to be able to provide the service, the, pro the performances or whatever that, that, you're, that you're delivering 
as your product. You got to be careful though. You might want to give up all your equity before you actually make money. Yeah, well, right? And this is, that's a very good point. Uh, what the way that, that I was talking before about having a development plan and a capital plan, what you want to do is look for places where the valuation of your company hockey sticks. And, and there are certain things that you can identify that, that will cause a step up in the valuation of your company. Mm -hmm. Getting that product ready or, or a prototype or making your first sale or um, getting a, a contract. I mean, there, there are a zillion, well, a plethora of different things that will cause a step up in the valuation. And it's all about valuation because remember what you're doing is trading equity for dollars when you're going out for capital. Uh, the more your equity is worth, the less you're going to have to give in order to, to get a dollar. So you want to time your capital raises with those steps in valuation. You raise just enough money so that you can get to that step up in your valuation. Okay, then you go out and you raise enough money to get to the next hockey stick point mm -hmm. in valuation. Am I making sense? Yeah, it's a process. If it's you take process. it in steps, right? And, and it's it, it, it requires guts and mm -hmm. it requires a lot of work to figure out where these, these steps are and how much it's gonna cost you or what resources you need to get there. And again, think in terms of resources rather rather than dollars, because it may well be that you can get a resource through some sort of bartering or for equity, and it'll cost you a whole lot less in equity than it would be to raise the money and then go out and purchase access to that resource. Yeah, it makes a lot so of it's sense. Just a, it's just a change in mindset. 